Welcome to School of the Bible. Here at School of the Bible, we like to take 15 verses and maybe about 15 minutes and take the time to converse, to study, to recognize what might be before our eyes that God is giving to us to understand what it is that He would conspire in our life to match that which is written in the book, that we also might be people of the book, that we might be led by the Spirit of God, that we might be filled with the same Spirit that caused those who heard, wrote, and have applied scholastic editorial license, we could say, to presenting to us a book of books the Bible, that when we have God's Spirit in us, then His Spirit bears witness with our spirit, and together we receive the things that God is speaking as though it was His voice itself being heard because God gives us ears to hear what the Spirit of God would say in this, the book that some would call a Bible. But when we have the Spirit of God speaking it, it becomes the Word of God. And so we're in the second book of Kings, sometimes called the fourth book, but the second book of Kings that we call 2 Kings 15.15. Obviously, 15 minutes for 15 verses. And so we read, Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and as a... And a had, <laughs> I should take my practice and go back to Hebrew. Um, and Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, God of Ekron? Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are you now turning back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said to us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but shall surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you, and told you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man, and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. And he spoke unto him, Thou man of God, the king has said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came down fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. 
Therefore let my life now be precious in your sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. Lots of people reading the book of Kings want to be Elijah. Not me. <laughs> it's interesting that we have a story being told. It's interesting that we have a certain amount of power struggle going on. Even like we do even now in America today as we see Donald Trump on the one hand with his power struggles and telling people what to do and on the other hand people that are Christians saying hey that's not right what are we to do what should we be doing should we be following Donald Trump as it says that we should do like in Timothy or one of the other scriptures you're told to recognize that sometimes authorities are given for your safety or are you told to follow the king or the leader of the country? Well, we have Moab who rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And we have Isaiah who fell down through a lattice and is sickened unto death. And we have a man who obviously is not turning to the Lord, but is turning to his counselors and the God of Ekron. That's not unlike what's happening today in America. There are people that don't want God to speak to them. I think of myself right now sitting here in this position of sharing with you what Jesus says and what Jesus does and how Jesus is and why he speaks and how he speaks and what he will speak to you and how he will live with you and you can talk to him and he will talk to you. And I find myself being like Elijah and I don't want to be Elijah. Not at all. I'm me. I have my own issues even as you'll see if you look at verse 15, the angel of the Lord spoke to Elijah and told him to go down. Because Elijah's not this confident man. Elijah is simply a man who says, hey, and he, frankly, God honors what he's saying. A lot of people try to make him out to be these prophets are like some kind of, you know, power-hungry, mad, crazy guys that are like declaring things. When in reality, sometimes they're just broken people. People that are like you and I, that are not that all over the place or all out there like Donald Trump but are humble and then when they're used by God sometimes they appear more than what they are when I see this and I read of it it says if I be a man of God and that's what I get out of all of this not Elijah not the king not Donald Trump not America and not the people of Israel who were fallen under this king and being led astray, as you can see already, the captains of two armies had come and said, hey, well, you know, you got to come. You know, I find that interesting, too, because I think about a couple of instances just now that's going to happen next week. One thing that I tell people is you don't need guns. You know, you trust in the Lord. Elijah trusted in the Lord. He didn't need a gun. This is the perfect example. People tell me, no, Jesus told you to have a sword. No, he didn't. He told them to get a sword because they were going to do something with those swords that Jesus was going to heal someone. So he could make the point about if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And it was almost like his last message to the disciples before they were scattered. Don't follow violence. Don't follow the ways that you're used to. Follow me. And that's kind of why I look at Elijah and I find something interesting for both of us, for all of us, for even Donald Trump. What do you want to be? Do you want to be king? Didn't turn out so good for David. Sure didn't turn out so good for Saul. Doesn't look so good for um, Isaiah. Here he is, making the wrong choice, leading the people astray, having a prophet of God come to him and say, hey, you're going to die. Is that what kind of message you want to hear? I mean, I tell people that all the time. You're going to die. It's obvious of that. That's not a big revelation. But in this case, the king was seeking to find an answer. And he wasn't asking God for the answer any more than Donald Trump is. 
But even setting the king aside for a minute, the captain of 50 obeyed the king. The second captain of 50 obeyed the king. The third finally said, look, you know, I got this order, but I got to figure this one out because this ain't working so well for, you know, following the king. I need to bow down and follow the Lord. And that's where you better find yourself. Because if you're in the army or you're in the ICE, you know, the naturalization kind of patrols, and if you're in police forces and you're enforcing an ungodly order, is that where you want to be? Really? Putting yourself between a man of God and a king and you standing in between. What do you want to be? I would walk off the job. I would leave the army behind. I would say, hey, I would rather follow Elijah and listen to what the man of God has to say than follow the king and what he may do to Elijah or to anyone else that doesn't obey. We know the fire of God was sent down by God himself. So what are we doing today to make ourselves follow God and not man? Because that's the message that we have for you today. Don't follow what you think is right. You make sure that you know that God is what you're following. And God is who is telling you what to do. And God is the one you're following. And you are becoming the man of God. It isn't Elijah you're told to follow. You're told to follow what the Lord says. And he may send you an angel of the Lord. And you'll know that that's not a fallen angel or a weirdo angel or a wacko. You'll know that it's from the Lord. But if you're listening to Donald Trump, just like this king, as Isaiah, and we'll see that he's just like Mr. Trump as a president. He wants the people to adore him. He wants the people to praise him. He wants the people to thank him. He wants the people to accept what he has to say. And unfortunately, he's not following God. And so what's going to happen is that God is going to send a man of God to the children of Israel to remind them, oh, you can choose to follow someone else. But on my watch, there's still a God in Israel. And he is the Lord our God.